Good morning. My name is Jay Rothman and welcome to Real People, Real Stories, Raw, from Surviving to Thriving. This morning it is uh, 11 a.m. on the West Coast. It is 2 p.m. on the East Coast of the United States and I am excited to introduce my, my guest, Ann Miller, coming in from the state of Wisconsin. Good afternoon, Ann. Good afternoon, Jay. Thank you for having me on the show today. I'm very, very, very humbled and very, very grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to just to take a moment as we wait for some, some of our friends and family in the, in, the, in the Facebook community that are joining us. Welcome to Colleen Gabor, as well as Jutta Steckwith coming in from Berlin, Germany. Uh, feel free in the comment sections to share what country or state you are coming in from. If you hear something that you like or love and it resonates with you with love, you can gently tap your like or love button on your device and let us know that you have been impacted by something perhaps that Ann or I have shared. Also, if you have any questions for Ann or comments, please feel free to share it with us. Um, I'd like to just start out by uh, saying again, welcome to the studio. My intention is to always set a very safe space and hold space and an environment for you. And if at any time a question should come up from within that I put out to you, and if you're not ready or you're uncomfortable, you can, with love, um, set a boundary with me. And, uh, and I will, will respect you for that. And so with that, I, I'd like to just touch on a little bit about how we met Anna. I'd like to uh, invite you from your perspective, how did we meet and how did we end up right here, right now in this moment? Okay, thank you, Jay. So this March, I was in Vegas at Jessica Alstrom's Quantum Revolution Tour. I was invited by my friend, Tina. And I've been continuing on my path of path and journey of healing for many, many years. And I knew deep, deep, deep down inside of me that this was this was where I needed to be. So I took the leap of faith and I was there. You were also there with Mary. And as I started to get to know um, more of more of the attendees and everyone was there, I just felt these very strong soul to soul, heart to heart connections. And I had these visions coming through at the time of doing just this. But I didn't know who my audience was, what I was going to say other than it felt very much from the heart that there were things that I wanted to share with others. Um, to help others always with the intention to share my heart with others. And I remember sitting there at the tour in Vegas and you and Mary were sitting a row ahead of me. And I started to learn more about um, who was who and then saw you and Mary again at the, at the celebration ball. And within the, the last, um, last week, last couple of weeks, I had this inner urging from my own soul to reach out to you. Because since I've been back from that tour in Vegas, even since the, the day that I was supposed to leave to come back home, I looked over at my friend Tina and I said, I have these words flowing out of me, all this poetry flowing out of me. It unlocked something that laid, this gift that lay dormant inside of me that I hadn't used since I was a little girl. And I took my pen to paper and I just started letting the words come out. And little did I know that all these messages that I was getting previous to this event about writing a book, I got the answer about the book and it was sharing my poetry, sharing these words with others coming from my heart space. So I followed my inner urging and I reached out to you and I asked for an, an endorsement. 
I have a lot of respect for the work that you do and connecting with other people on a heart to heart, soul to soul basis. And it was also a reminder to me that it's okay to ask for help. That I don't have to continue on this journey and do everything alone. I became a very, very self-sufficient little girl at a very young age. And I believe that many of us can relate to that. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, and also, I want to acknowledge and thank you for, I was absolutely surprised, shocked, um, humbled, when I received the email from you, um, I didn't even know you had my email address. You must have found it on, I think I have it available on my Facebook personal page. I received an email from you and uh, just a few days ago, and I read it twice. And I, I just, I cannot believe that you reached out to me and you in fact did ask me to be a part of your book project. And I, and I read you shared three of the poems with me and, and I shared this with you the other evening when we, when we did a video chat. Um, I read it first to myself and then I read um, a few hours later, I read it out loud to Mary and I was so impacted by each poem. Uh, it actually, I got emotional because each poem spoke to me. I, I, I felt and heard your, you talking to yourself as the adult and speaking to your inner child, that beautiful little girl. But what I also felt in that moment that those poems are not only were written for you, but they were written for every person that buys that book. Every person that reads the poem it is it is our story it wasn't just your story it's our story and it was it was incredibly impactful in the moment for both mary and i and it was minutes after that that i reached out to you and i said are you available can we talk right now because i was in that moment of just um it touched me it touched me because of the work that I had to do at the beginning of my healing journey, I didn't know I could write. I didn't know that I had the ability. I, my story I'd been telling myself up here my whole life was I didn't write. I didn't know how to write. And uh, I didn't like how I even wrote. So, but one day I just started to write. It just opened up. And, and within a short while, weeks, it became my platform for blogging. I started to write my healing journey along the shoreline of Huntington Beach, California. And, uh, and so what I read within your new book that's coming out this fall was my story, is my story, is pretty much everyone's story. And each poem was so impactful and so powerful. And so I am honored, humbled, and excited to be part of your book. Um, I will do everything I can do to help you in in this next phase of your healing journey of promoting your book, because um, it's amazing. And I'm not one that likes, I'm not a guy that, I don't think I've ever read a book of poetry before. It's just not my style. It wasn't my style. But today I don't have a style. There's no more styling, you know, I just show up. I just show up with an open heart, an open mind. And, uh, and then, and then, the, beautiful gifts arrive, the blessings. And so you are a gift and blessing in my life today, Ann Miller. So thank you for that. Thank you, Jay. And you are very much a gift in my life as well. And I'm, words cannot even begin to express how much gratitude I have right now. I'm, I'm so grateful for your kind words, this heart to heart, soul to soul connection and and for your help and for holding space for me today and allowing me to express. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. So what I'd like to do in this moment, Anne, is, is invite you to, uh, to share with, with me and, and those that are watching in this community. I just want to, I do want to acknowledge um, Kathy Waldowski has joined us. Andrea, thank you for joining us as well. 
Elizabeth Richter. Elizabeth, what country again are you coming in from? I know you're not in the United States because you just said good evening, Jay. And there is no uh, time zone that is in the evening yet. I don't recall if it's, uh, well, I believe you're over in Europe. Just let me know what country that is. I apologize that I, right now it has slipped my mind. Um, Colleen, I believe you're coming in from Southern California. I do owe you a response to a text you sent me the other day. Um, thank you for that. If you, if you, in this moment now, I'd like to invite you to, to take us back to, uh, to, to where your journey began um, and share where you are comfortable beginning and, and, and how much you are ready to, to dive into. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So um, from early on, I always felt different and I could never put, put my finger on it as far as um, it's really even trying to identify with myself. And I remember early on that there was a lot of arguing in the household between my parents. My parents divorced when I was a teenager and they both did the best that they could. I have a very loving relationship with my dad currently. But unfortunately with my mom, I had to set some very healthy boundaries and continue to love and pray from a distance. I just remember as a child crying a lot, being depressed a lot, being sad, feeling all alone, and being around um, lots of arguments and hearing other family members argue. And it was very, very toxic to me and to my little, my precious little soul and to my inner child. I remember my high school years that I just wanted to fit in. And I really had a, I had a hard time with my high school years because at the age of 11, I was sexually abused by my uncle. And that was really, that was really hard really, really hard. I didn't understand what happened. I felt sick. I didn't even want to be around, be around who I thought was my, my favorite uncle anymore. And it was hard because I love my aunt. I love my cousin so much, but I would make up every single excuse not to be there and not to babysit anymore because I was so afraid of it happening again. Going into my high school years, I remember before high school started, I read, I read a book and I believe it was a Judy Bloom book. And there's something about um, one of the characters where she talked about how she would modify her weight. And I noticed from early on that be I didn't understand the connection at the time because of being sexually molested. I didn't understand how I was um, judging myself and looking at that mirror, I was looking at that mirror in disgust, looking at that mirror as I was the, the fattest, ugliest, dirtiest, filthiest person in the world. My coping mechanism was food. I would eat a lot, I would throw it up. I would eat a lot, I would throw it up. Starve go back to binging and purging, being so fixated to the point of obsession with exercise and really um, being so critical of myself. 
And this went on for so many years of my life. And I wasn't able to openly express. I wasn't, I wasn't able to share. I was given as a victim by what happened. I was told by my uncle, you can never talk about this. No one will ever believe you. They're going to think you're making this up. So I harbored these deep, deep feelings deep inside of me for so many years of my life. And with all of the cycles of the eating disorders and not loving myself, I attracted in more of the same, more unloving relationships. And all I wanted was to be loved. Feeling like it wasn't within me, that it was external from me, that I would feel love if I had the right boyfriend, the right this, the, the right look, the right that. And this cycle repeated over and over and over again. So when I was, fast forward to, I want to say 19 years of age, I was in my first relationship that turned violent. And it was, it was the hardest thing but that part of me kept saying, he'll change. He'll be better tomorrow. I can change him. He never changed. There were the threats. I had to have three surgeries done on my nose because I was hit open handed to the face after because of an argument. I lost my second pregnancy from that relationship. A lot, a lot of hard times, a lot of hard times. And I lost so much of myself along the way. Even to this day, it, it's still, still hard to talk about it. it. It truly is. But that's when I saw what domestic domestic violence was. And then being at home and not having a strong relationship with my mom, that was really, really hard. So I was keeping all of this stuff buried so deep inside of me and continued on for so many years. My first big eye opener was in the early 90s where my body just started to shut down. And I had to have an emergency surgery where they had to remove my appendix. And I had a lot of other health things going on. My body just had enough. And I remember the surgeon saying to me that had we waited a couple of minutes longer, I would not be here. I wouldn't be here sharing my story because it had gotten that bad as far as what was going on in my body at the time. So in 1991 was when I really started to, I remember getting down on my hands and knees and getting up and just praying and asking God, just asking for help. It was the first time I remember asking for help and even picking up the phone and calling. It was, it was a hotline number asking for help. And that's when the start of my therapy started to work on the eating disorders and the pain that I was feeling inside. And it was the first ther therapy session that I had where I realized that I wasn't alone. And she had gone through very some, not the same, but very similar set of circumstances. So I felt like I saw, I saw most starting to see myself. So I've been, I've been more open-minded to try a lot of different things. And 
with all due respect to Western medicine, I knew that I needed answers and I needed to, to make some changes. So I started to approach my journey from a holistic standpoint in regards to mind, body, spirit, and to find that balance. And I continued on for many, many more years of my life in attracting in unhealthy relationships, a lot of triggers, a lot of emotions, not being the nicest person in the world, where I know and I recognize that today and look back at that, that I was either playing the role of the victim or I was playing the role of the perpetrator. Where in each and every relationship, I was there to teach them something or they were there to teach me something. They were some of my greatest teachers, even though at the time it didn't feel that way. And really learning to love myself again and be able to look in the mirror. And I share this message with every single person that I connect with whether it's on a personal basis or professional basis, when you can stand in front of the mirror and say those three words and believe them, say, I love you and believe it, that's where the magic is. Yeah. And I'd like to take a moment to, uh, well, first invite you to take a nice deep breath. Thank you. And honor yourself because I, I honor you in this moment. It takes so much courage to, to, uh, to accept an invitation to come into the studio and share your story, whether it be here or whether it be uh, in a workshop or even within your own circle of life. It takes so much courage to, to speak the words and sometimes to go back and share the backstory um, and we are all affected differently when we're in the moment of sharing the, the childhood experiences and the wounds, the traumas, the pain, the suffering. And because of that, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate you right now and how much respect I have for you. And, um, so thank you for that. Um, you, you, you just touched on, you said, I have to learn how to love myself. And I'd like for you to kind of expand upon what that, how did you, what does that roadmap look like? How did you go from lacking self-love to beginning to perhaps experience what that can feel like? on the emotional level, as well as the physical level. So I was reconnecting with my, my friend Tina again, and this was in 2015, where I really was hitting another rock bottom in my life. And at that time, I was working in corporate for over 26 years. I sustained an injury to the right side of my body where I couldn't even lift my right arm above my head. And I was sitting in front of a computer. So with that type of, in, with, excuse me, with that type of an injury, it was very painful for me to um, even type on a, on a keyboard. And I knew at that time that I was also in a relationship that was not correct for, for me. So there are a lot of things that were going on. I ended up losing my, my job with corporate in April of that year, reconnected later that year with a friend of mine. And she told me about another healing modality, something that I hadn't tried yet, Reiki. And I couldn't shake the feeling. I went and I had a session done myself and continued on a journey to expand more on my healing of the mind, body, spirit, 
continue to work through the layers, the layers of the onion, continue to allow the tears to come up, process the pain that was coming up, give myself a voice, understanding how the blocked energy fields in the body, the chakras, how they have a significant impact on the different areas of, of our body, mind, spirit. And I've had some many wonderful mentors, coaches, loved ones that have been supportive along the way. But there was a point where I felt like I had to go into a bit of seclusion to really work through understanding my gifts and getting back to center, back to my heart. And I remember it was after my level three Reiki attunement, which completely opened up all of my gifts that I felt like I went through a another time that the dark soul, the dark soul and really working through some deep, 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 dark stuff that was coming up and out that was looking to, to be released. Another part of me that wanted to be healed and so much surrounding my heart space. What I, what I find um, interesting is that millions of women and men have experienced domestic abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse in, at some point in their life. It touches millions of people. Some choose to um, stay very much in the darkness of the trauma, of the wounds, of the pain, of the hurt, and don't know how to find their way out of it. And they just spend years, decades, suffering, surviving. Others, somehow, some way, like yourself, are able to navigate your way out. What do you think, or why do you think you were able to begin the healing journey. What was it that was your catalyst for beginning the journey? I have this, it was buried so deep, but there was still this little spark inside of me that, that, that warrior, that light, I didn't want to give up. There were times I remember as a teenager where I felt suicidal. I would even talk about suicide, just all the different things that, that went through my head because of how I felt at that time. But I could never go through with it. And I kept my faith even though sometimes I really questioned everything, something in my heart kept telling me, continue to move forward. And when I was introduced to another modality of Reiki and then understanding all the other modalities that I worked with holistically and was starting to see the changes in myself, and how I was also not only helping myself, but helping others. That's when I had the light bulb moment. And when Anne knew who she wanted to be when she grew up, that was the start of it, to help others. Shining my light as an empath. 
if I may paraphrase you, um, what I just heard you say, if I may, is you had an awareness that you have a purpose. Once you had the awareness that your purpose for your life is way bigger than your own suffering and trauma and wounds that you had experienced. And that by continuing on your own healing journey and allowing you to walk and work through the process that you will become the greatest version of yourself, thus being then able to inspire other women and maybe men to step forward and give you permission to hold space for them. Yes. Yes. How does it feel right now to, to receive what I just shared with you? A lot of love. A lot of love. Um, like the best gift that you could possibly give someone. I have so much gratitude right now. And understanding having a much better understanding that some of these things that I experienced take, I've been saying for the longest time, turning pain into purpose, doing something with that. I love that. That's so beautiful. Anne. And that was another catalyst as I wrote my words and they came out and came out in the form of poetry to get what was in here and from pen to paper to get the words out and to know that I'm not alone. One of one of the uh, I shared this with you the other evening when we're when we're chatting on video. I said to you that what I found is as I was writing um, for myself, I would first read it to myself, but then I would read it out loud first to myself while I was still in that that space, that safe space along the the shoreline, along the ocean, and. Most of those mornings, I, as I'd look out, I'd glance out to the sea, I'd see sometimes one dolphin, sometimes a pod of dolphins, sometimes a dolphin, a baby dolphin would, uh, would jump out and start, you know, jump up in the air and doing flips. And once in a while, I'd see a whale. Um, and, and that was just like such a cathartic space for me to learn how to start to express my thoughts and my feelings in writing. But most important was what I learned was the power of hearing my own voice speak the words that I just wrote was, I think, the greatest, the greatest gift, the greatest tool that came out of the writing was to do that. Because if I'm just writing it and I'm not speaking the words, I'm still silent. I'm still not. I'm, I'm missing a huge part of the healing so first I started to read it out loud. And if I wasn't, if the tears weren't streaming when I was writing it, almost every time the tears would just start to flow when I was hearing my voice speak it. And for me, that wasn't even enough. So I'd eventually come home from my two or three hour bike ride or walk along the shoreline. And uh, I'd ask Mary if she, would be willing to hear what I just wrote. And it's beautiful. Because I was able to uh, take my own healing to the next level, which was, <clears throat> excuse me, but connecting 
soul to soul in an environment that I felt very safe because that was created, that was there. It was, it was, it was, it was a divine intervention of sorts. Um, so it was something I had never experienced in my life and it was beautiful. And once I experienced it, I was like, oh yes, yes, yes. This is gonna continue because I knew it was so powerful. But for me, like I shared with you, it wasn't just like the other day, it was such a reminder because when I read your poems to myself, it, it was very different than reading it out loud. Because when you read it out loud and you feel the vibrations coming from within uh, your vocal cords and you feel it all the way through your chest, at least I do, um, it, it takes on such a more pronounced uh, experience so much more impactful, connecting it just from seeing it with your eyes to feeling it deep down into your, into your chest, into your organs, into your soul. So beautiful. I'm so excited to, uh, to read the rest of the book when it comes out. But I do want to, I transgressed here, so I do want to bring us back to, if you could in this, in this moment share some perhaps some additional, some additional tools, some additional things that, that you reached for that you seeked that allowed you to to really get hone in and do some deep diving into the shadow work you know the dark night of the soul as you refer to it as and and how that helped navigate you from living in that space of just saying i'm a survivor to today being able to affirm i am a i am thriving i am a thriver Yes, thank you, Jay. First, what I would like to say is thank you so very much for sharing your heart with all of us, because I very, very much feel it. I'm right there with you. For me, my safe space is my boyfriend, my boyfriend, Stefan. And after I experienced the the first quantum revolution tour for myself that I went to with Jessica Alstrom in March, something in me, many things in me shifted. And shortly thereafter was made a connection with Stefan. We were friends with each other back in the corporate days. And we reconnected in May. And at that moment where I chose to love myself, and when I talk about that magic, I manifested in and brought into my life very safe, very mutually loving relationship. And I am so grateful for that. And to be able to allow myself to be real, be raw, be authentic. We're both going through the I Am workshop together. We're both going to the Quantum Revolution Tour in Kansas City together in September. We're sharing our many aspects of our journey together but also allowing ourselves to still be our own individual person. I am Anne, he is Stefan, but then there is the us component. So that's been such a huge blessing in my life. I'm so grateful for coming home and feeling like I am at home and I, I feel safe every single day. And I'm, I'm, there isn't a day that doesn't go by where I am so grateful for that. And I know I've shared with you many times that self-care every day, that's my non-negotiable. I do things to raise my vibration and dancing. It's, it's writing more poetry. It's um, doing my Reiki. It's doing, um, doing these different things um, to continue to work through the layers. 
That's that's beautiful. I, I want to circle back. You you, if I may paraphrase you again, you mentioned uh, manifesting a relationship with Stefan. Yes. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a different um, a different perspective with you. We hear the word manifestation a lot, and especially in the spiritual communities. Um, but I feel it from a different perspective, which is, is that perhaps maybe for the first time in your life, you had done enough work for yourself, with yourself, perhaps by yourself at times to open your heart space yes. for, for another person. And this person just happens to be Stefan. Yeah, I don't think it's something that we just manifest. I, I think it's, it's that we have to be willing to show up and do the work, have the courage to face those dark shadows, because if we don't face them, they're going to continue to follow you because that's what shadows do. And if we want to heal them, we just have to not try because there is, there's no trying in my life. Either I'm in or I'm not. Either I'm committed or I'm not. Either right. I show up or I don't. I don't try anymore. Because trying for me in my own life was a pass. It was maybe it will and maybe it won't. Maybe I will or maybe I won't. And so that's, that's kind of how I received it from you is, is that you finally felt safe enough with yourself because of the work you've done to open your heart and just trust yes. that maybe this time you can manifest another man, another human being that is on his own journey or willing to be on a journey of healing his own childhood wounds and shadows and I love what you said, how you guys are both showing up independently and together, because that's how it has worked magic in my life. Yes. I spend my mornings doing my work. She, Mary spends her mornings doing her work, uh, self-care, the non-negotiables. And then we get back together at some point during the day and we connect and we then do some work together uh, that improves self-improvement, whether it be listening to blogs YouTube, reading chapters together in a book, talking about it. But we show up every single day for ourselves first and then for others secondly. And that's just, it just, it works. It's been, it changed my life as it appears it has changed your life. Yes. To extend on my journey, going back to Coming back to center, I knew that I wanted to continue to move forward. I was on a mission for myself and my journey to continue to be the best version of me. And I didn't have a mentor at that time. My mentor for the past three months has been Jessica Alstrom, and I'm so grateful for that. And it's like that saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will present themselves. And I've been learning a lot, learning a lot from her and learning a lot about myself along the way. and was able to look in in the last few months as far as what was still out of alignment in my life. And to be able to bring, shed light to that. And continue to do what I'm so passionate about and that's helping others, connecting with others and reminding them that they're not alone. We're in this together 
and I'm here to hold space for others. Beautiful. I'd like to uh, I'd like to switch gears and I chose to wear this shirt today. Choose forgiveness, and I don't recall if you and I touched on on this topic at all, briefly perhaps. But I'd like to invite you to share from your perspective how choosing forgiveness or not has impacted you on your on this journey of healing. As soon as you said that, I I went back into a time frame. This was at my my godmother slash grandmother's funeral. And I it was asked from me if I could have permission, that they wanted my permission for my that uncle if he could attend the funeral. That was hard. And I said, yes. I read my grandmother's eulogy at my grandmother's funeral. And at the end, my uncle came up to me. He literally got down on his knees, crying, begging me for forgiveness. Mm. I pulled him up and I said, I've forgiven you. I haven't forgotten. But I, at that moment, I had the floor and told him how I felt, how much anger I had, how I felt that many years of my childhood weren't there because of what happened how I carried that pain with me for so many years. But part of my journey was to make that full circle and forgive him. A big I, uh, part I just want to interject for a moment here and just share with you that yeah. I, I've got physically right now, I've got um, chills through my body. Because what I heard was that when you were asked if it would be okay for your uncle to show up, in that moment was a very defining moment for you in your healing journey. Because you had a choice. Now, if you had said no, your uncle may never, may never, I've had the courage to get down on his knees and ask you for forgiveness because you had done enough work your heart was open to see him not knowing how it would impact you in that moment not knowing how you would emotionally physically and spiritually be impacted but you had the courage to show up for yourself, for that beautiful little girl, that little child within you that's still alive, one more time, and hold her, create safe space for her, and let her know that no matter what, even in this moment, I can take care of you, I can love you, and I'm gonna parent you, because you, had the courage to say, yes. You got to hear what you've been waiting perhaps your lifetime to hear from your uncle, which yeah. is, I am sorry. That was the closure that I needed, that she needed. Mm. And I also had to forgive myself for all the people that I had hurt along the way, knowing that I was projecting out my pain and hurting others. 
I had to forgive myself. That was equally as important. And forgive others along the way. Big lessons in life. Teachers. How are you doing right now? How do you feel? Lighter. Lighter. I am so proud of you. Thank you. Not coming from the ego pride space, but from the, from the heart space. I'm just so, I'm so proud. I'm so happy for you that, uh, that you were here, that you took one more step in your healing journey to come in today and uh, for us to, to connect this way and for you, to, for you to share your story with perhaps maybe one person that's listening live or catches us on replay that changes the trajectory of their suffering. That gives them the courage to begin healing or changing their strategy on how they are attempting to heal. I would like to invite you in this moment, Anne, to, to share um, perhaps if there's one woman or man that's listening today that needs to hear something that you say, if you could perhaps share some thoughts and closing words as we approach the hour, believe it or not. Oh, <laughs> yes. If someone is in pain, if someone is either in the middle of a domestic relationship, abusive relationship, or they've dealt with one in the past or sexual abuse, or even assault. I invite you to, to share some thoughts. So when I reached out for help regarding domestic violence, sexual abuse, I reached out to what was called the Task Force on Battered Women and Children, which is now the Sojourner Truth House. There's hotlines available, there's safe shelters available, there is help available. It's okay to ask for help. You are worth it. You are enough. I'm right there with you because I've been there. And change is possible. And I'm not gonna lie, it's work, but you are worth it. Even taking one step forward versus no step at all, you're still moving forward. Don't ever give up. For anyone that wants to reach out to you, talk to you, perhaps work with you, you are a coach today. You are a Reiki master teacher. You are a healer. You're a psychic. Um, you have a lot of uh, a lot of tools that you wear on your belt. And uh, how can people get hold of you? So a great place to start is on my website which is ReikiAngelicHands.com. It's R-E-I-K-I-A-N-G-E-L-I-K-H-A-N-D-S.com. On my contact page, there's different ways to stay connected with me. This is my passion. This is my purpose. And it's helping others.
Thank you, Anne, for that. I'd like to ask you, Anne, since I've been the one doing all the all the questions and uh, holding space for you, perhaps there is something that I missed. Perhaps it's something that you'd like to share or something that you'd like to ask. Uh, so I'd like to open the floor. This is something new. This is not this is new. I haven't done this before, but just uh, intuition just spoke to me and said perhaps to put that out there. So the floor is yours. So I get a lot of, um, there's still some curiosity, um, question marks regarding some aspects of what I do and even what my life is like as a medium. And all of my work is done with compassion. It's done with love. It's not, um, the way I explain it is it's not anything, to, it's not anything to fear. I have very crystal clear intentions and very healthy boundaries with those in the physical realm, as well as those in the spiritual realm. And I'm always coming from the heart space. Sharing these gifts with others and knowing from early on that I was different, that I am different, that I have these gifts. Embracing our gifts embracing our why we're here. That's a big part of it. And it's okay to share that with others. And that's something that I've wanted to say for a very long time. That it's okay to be different. That's what makes each and every one of us unique. And I thank you, Jay, for sharing your gifts, sharing your story, sharing the space today. I'm so grateful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'd like for you to take just a moment to share how you felt prior to coming into the studio today and leading up to this moment and how this experience has been for you. And I, I'm asking you to share this because I know that there are thousands of women that are, that are or were right where you are at in your journey. And perhaps maybe they'll hear something you share that will give them the courage to take their healing to the next level, which is by hearing their voice speak the words. What has this been like for you today? And, and if, uh, if you could maybe close this out with those parting words, I'd appreciate that. Okay. I felt nervous today, um, but I had to remind myself, it's a note that I wrote to myself that I am enough and that I am worthy and I am safe. Safety is a, is a big, big priority in my life. And being able to find that safe space where you can continue to be your true authentic self, be able to work through those layers, let the tears out, let the pain out. That's so important to be able to have that, that safe space and to know that it is possible to never give up hope. Thank you for that, Anne. Um, what's up next for you? What do you got? What's next? Is it the book? Is that your next big, big thing that's going on? Uh, is there anything else that's on a, 
on the near horizon? Yeah, so the book um, this fall, and I am also going to get my certification in light language, getting the rest of my light language attunements with my mentor, Jessica Alstrom. And I will be doing that this month. So adding another modality of healing, not only for myself, but also for those that are looking for another type of healing, continuing to grow. I'm excited. Beautiful, beautiful. Me well, I'm, I'm excited for you. And um, at this moment, I am going to close the show out and thank those that have, in fact, stayed with us through the show in our community. Uh, I want to acknowledge a few people that did join up, join us after uh, the last uh, acknowledgement I had. Brett, thank you for joining us today. Cindy Aldridge coming in. Deborah coming in from Payson, Arizona. Uh, Andre, I did mention Jasper Fox jumped on. Julie Kiss, Sarah Moon. Uh, let's see if I missed anyone. Desiree Stewart, Pam O'Donnell. Thank you so much for joining us. Gina Palazzo. I love that name. Gina Palazzo. Love saying it every time she catches me on a spontaneous live. It's been a while since I've seen you, Gina. So thank you. Thank you for holding space and uh, joining both Ann Miller and myself today. Ula Upma coming in. I'm not sure, Ula, where are you coming in from? Even if the show ends, you could come back in and I'd love to know what country. I know one of our guests came in, is in from Romania today. Vicki Lee, good to see you. Linda Willis, thank you so much for being one of our top fans and one of, uh, one of the people right now that's holding incredible space for me as, as I am working on healing uh, the race for time right now. Um, Elizabeth Richer, I think we got it all. Britt Lahi, uh, no, I don't. Kuliz, Amanda Wake, Lena, jo Joani, oh, Joni, 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 Adai Farhat. I'm not sure what country you're coming in from. I suspect, uh, well, I'm not going to suspect anyway. Just let me know what country you are coming in from. Laura Lee coming in from Canada. Good to see you, Laura. I hope you haven't had an incredible week. And Andrea. Elizabeth Lynn Johnson, Gina Marie Burrell, thank you for joining us and being a, uh, in our community of spirituality gone wild. Thank you so much. Barbara Douglas, Barbara Douglas, one of these days, she is going to be on a show. She's going to step into the studio just as you did today, Ann, and she's going to share her backstory. Uh, Robert C. Stern coming in from New York. Gabby, Deb's Deb coming in from Canada. I think I've covered it all. Um, and of course, oh, Mary, Mary McKinney, one of my dear friends coming in from Huntington Beach, California, Steve Gones, uh, Krishna. Wow, these names just keep coming at me. Robert J. Moore coming in from Canada. Nikki Sh uh, Shetty, thank you so much. Nikki Shetty, are you related to the J. Shetty, my coach and mentor? If yes, just hit yes in comments if you're still with us. Indigo, good to see you as well. Kuliz, Kuliz, Le Lacey. Lacey Smith, you know that name, you know that young lady. Uh, Cordelia, nice to see you as well. Tony Alexander Young, thank you for joining us today on the show. Fabiano is in fact coming in from Romania. Matter of fact, I've got family. My mom's side of the family was, was from Romania. Uh, so thank you for coming in from uh, my home country of Romania. And with that, um, and have a beautiful rest of the day. I will say this to you that uh, take some time to just process this experience because when we go to the past and we're not in the moment present, it does stir up some emotions, some feelings. Allow yourself to, to process, allow yourself to feel them. Don't push them down, don't stuff them down, but just allow yourself to just be, acknowledge it, have the awareness, have the acceptance, and then, and then uh, work through it how you know best. And I know you've got so many tools today that, yes. uh, that you, that you can reach for to can help you get through it. Maybe take a, take a nap, have a nutritious meal, drink lots of water today. Um, and, uh, I know that, uh, I believe everyone that is in your life today is here for a reason. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you're here to teach us a lesson that's very painful. And other times they're, 
to, to, uh, to just be in our life, coming from the space of love and kindness. But regardless, we're here to learn. We're here to be enlightened. And, uh, and you, in fact, have touched thousands of people today just by Thank showing up. You. Thank you, Jay. Thank you so very much. Thank you. You're welcome. If you could stay in the studio, I'm just gonna uh, gonna jump out in a moment here. Um, okay. And uh, thanks again for joining us. And real people, real stories raw, from surviving to thriving. We'll catch you. I'm probably gonna do a show sometime later this week. I got a couple of uh, potential guests that um that are gonna be jumping in the studio. Have an awesome day. And no matter what, take some time for self care. Set some non negotiables, and your life will get better. Thank you so much. I love you and have an incredible day. Bye-bye.